Hi, I'm Dr. Mindy Curry and I'm a naturopathic doctor and I do house calls in the greater Portland area and I have a, a small clinic in Milwaukee and I'm here to talk to you today about this plant growing, waving around back here behind my head. It's a uh, blue vervain or verbena hastata and it's a, a lovely a lovely herb that's in its peak of blooming right now and that's the time you want to pick it. So let's uh, let's meet this, this blue vervain. Now here it is, it's a herb that often grows out in wetlands. Here you can see the wet land is all around us and uh, marshy areas. It's pretty tall it's got these very serrated spear-like leaves. The very square stem, similar to mints. The flower itself, it's got a little spike and the little flowers come off around below the spike and grow up and then that's the seed pod there eventually. Now this is a native plant and so there's a variety of native insects and butterflies and birds that love love everything that this thing has and so we want to keep it around and growing in our wild environments. Here's a little pollinator right now. Oh, can you see it? It's a bee. I see a bumblebee back there too. Well, that's a nice patch. Let's go look at a few more patches. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to take the aerial parts at the height of flowering season. That means the flowering tops and the leaves, stems. And that's what you're going to use for your medicine. It's July. These guys have been blooming for a while already and will probably bloom for a little bit longer, but this seems to be really just the height of the bloom. You can see the blooms are pretty high up on the spear. There's quite a field of it. It's all over. Not sure if you can identify it from this view, but uh, give it a try. Let's get a close up in here. See if you can spot the beautiful blue vervain all the way out into this field. Here's an area where you can see it with a little less vegetation around it. You can see it's uh, very tall. The spiky leaves that come off. The same side of each stem alternating. They can be shorter. There's a variety of other species of verbena as well, often used to the morally. And here we've hit the verbena jackpot. Just look at this whole field. It's just full of it. And that's actually pretty great. One thing about blue verbena or verbena ver blue vervain or verbena hastata is that it tends to be not very prolific in in its regions. Most of the time you're just going to see little little patches of it here and there. And so you want to be very very careful not to take too much when you harvest it. Make sure you're leaving some that's going to go to seed and perpetuate the species in that area. If, if anything you want to leave enough to where the patch will grow. This patch is absolutely lovely though. 
you could gather quite a bit without being a burden. But don't take too much. Don't take more than you're going to need. It only lasts dried for maybe up to three years. In tincture form, it can last quite a bit longer, and so you won't need to take as much. Here's a more typical patch of blue vervain. You can see there's just a couple plants over there, or maybe four of them here. So you're not going to want to take too much from this patch, maybe two of the flowering tops. Leave the rest. Hello, we're back in my kitchen and we are going to process this blue vervain, beautiful verbena hostata, into a tincture. That's what I would like to preserve it for the maximum amount possible. I'm going to go with a tincture. Um, one of the more common ways to use blue vervain um, is to make a tea out of it. And to make a tea, you're going to want to dry these. And since they're kind of thick, you might want to dry them a little bit faster or a little bit more aggressively than you might otherwise with more leafier herbs. So I would suggest hanging this somewhere where it's uh, warmish, um, maybe using an, a, a low setting in a drying device, or uh, some, some herbalists even suggest putting this in a sunny spot for a, a bit of time because these are very thick and you don't want them to start to spoil. You want to kind of dry these fast, but I'm not going to go through the drying process. I'm just going to tincture these and forget about them until I need them. And tinctures are also a bit stronger. So something like this where I'm only ca uh, harvesting maybe this much for the whole year, I'm going to want to put that in a tincture so I can get the most benefit out of it. T tinctures tend to be uh, more concentrated and you can use a smaller amount of herb um, to get similar results because um, of the, the very intense extraction process and also the way that the alcohol pulls uh, the medicine into your cells through through your digestive tract a little bit more um, it's a potentiator let's uh let's chop these up now basically what i want to do is i want to chop these up to where i get some good surface area with the alcohol i'm going to use a hundred proof vodka this time um, a bit higher alcohol content for this one since it is thick and uh, yeah because of the specific constituents these are just lovely look at them look at them it's a beautiful flower I feel bad about cutting them but I'm going to here we go just making kind of good chunks that will be easy for the alcohol to extract the inner bits just cutting up the entire aerial part, so that's the flower and leaf and stem. Don't need the really thick stems. Toss that out. Otherwise, look for quality <clears throat> when you go through. Try to take out any bugs or uh, diseased bits of plant if you find it. Watch. And think about the plant as you cut it. Thank it for its experience and the way it's going to help you. Give it a good thought about what you're going to do with it, that it's going to become a part of you or part of the healing tradition for others. Let it know it's loved and needed and used responsibly. Okay, well I'm chopping, I'm talking. This is the blue vervain and the Latin name is Verbena Hastata. And this is a very relaxing but very bitter tasting herb. The active constituents called verbenalin. And basically this is a nervine that really calms the nerves. It can be a mild hypnotic sedative and a general antispasmodic. It's good for relaxing uh, dry coughs is an expectorant for dry coughs. 
It can help in reducing elevated blood pressure. It can reduce a fever. It's diuretic. This can also increase bile and support the liver function. But you got to watch out at high doses. This can be emetic, which means it induces vomiting. So don't go overboard on this one. Um, the basic general uses of this one are the basically the emotional rigors of the modern world, especially to relax frazzled overachievers and overthinkers that have been driven for a cause for too long but are now burned out and overwhelmed. We're talking about built-up body tension, especially if you have a stiff neck. Um, this can be used as an acute, but it's even better as a long-term uh, tonic. There's a quote that's kind of fun from Kiva Rose. Blue vervain is for when you're so irate and uptight you could dismember the nearest creature. So think about this in terms of generalized anxiety and anger, especially used in an a, in a anxiolytic formula with other things called like passion flower, maybe holy basil, motherwort, skullcap. It can also be used for other spasmodic disorders such as tics, palsy, Tourette syndrome, seizures. It can be very helpful for women who are having irritability and tension with PMS or with a stress-induced period loss or with hot flashes. But women have got to be aware to not use this if you're pregnant, as research has suggested some mechanisms that may have a potential to induce a miscarriage. You want to use this as a tincture, starting at low doses, or as a weak tea. Don't go overboard on this. Uh, too much, maybe up to three cups of a weak tea a day maximum. And you want to start at low doses on the tincture. And uh, here we are. Now look at that. Isn't that just beautiful? I could chop it a bit more, but in any case, it'll extract well with the high percent alcohol I'm going to put it into. Place that in a jar. You want to pretty much fill the jar. Don't want a big empty hole halfway up the jar. You want your jar to be full. You don't want it so full that it's tight. You want it full but to where you can still get the fluid to every bit of the plant material. Too tight, it could also potentially not have the best outcome. Here we go. Add the 100 proof vodka. You want to add the vodka pretty close to the top. Very small gap, but pretty much up there. Also, very important step is to wipe down the outside. Make sure there's nothing sticking up to block your lid, because that can also produce unsavory oxidized bits and unpleasant outcomes. Now look at that. That is got to be just a beautiful tincture just the way it is not chopped up too much but still chopped up enough and I'll sit this in the shelf for a couple months ideally you shake it every day and then eventually I'll strain it strain out those big chunks to where I just have the tincture that's left over that's the alcohol extract and that tincture can last for several several years without going bad keeping this medicine available for me at all times of the year even when this plant is not in season also remember to label your tincture go ahead and label where you found it what year it is what the plant is um, 
just specifics like that. You're going to want to maybe go back there someday. You're going to want to know where you found it. Uh, you're going to know what want to know how old it is, what the plan is. That's the most important thing. A lot of people just grab something like this, put it up on the shelf, and then they have no idea later on when it's all just weird brown bits in a jar what the plant actually looks like. It's not going to look this beautiful long term. These will fade and become a mature tincture. So now that I've shown you how to make some wonderful medicine, I want to remind you that it's very important to go see a doctor or a naturopath or at least an herbalist before starting any herbals for your conditions. For one thing, you may not really understand what your diagnosis is. You may think it's just a little bit of this and that that can be treated with some plants when it's really something serious and you're missing it and it could, could be fatal. Um, also, there are interactions between herbs and drugs and there's also contraindications between some of the problems you may be having and the herbs you may think you need. <laughs> so don't start taking anything willy-nilly unless you're sure what's going on. And to be sure, come see a naturopath like me. I'm in Portland, Oregon. I do house calls in the greater Portland area and I also have an office in Milwaukee. Thank you.